So we know how to take a parameterization and get a Cartesian equation and recognize what curve we're dealing with and what direction and what portion of the curve. The other skill is going to be to go backwards. So we're going to have some curve and we want to find a, a parameterization of that curve. Now, whenever you have one variable as a function of another, like in this case, x actually depends on y, what you can do, so you have this situation that one variable is a function of another, what you can do is you can set the independent variable to be t, and then the dependent variable will have to be that function of t. So for example, in this case, x is this function of y, it's y squared plus 2y, so we'll just set y equal to t, and then x will have to be g of t, which would be t squared plus 2t. So we get a parameterization. You can see if I use substitution, like before, that I'll recover the same Cartesian equation as before. Now, the problem says parameterize the upper half of the parabola. So maybe what we ought to do is look at a graph of this parabola. First, since x is equal to y squared plus 2y, if I factor out a y, I get x equals y times y plus 2. That's y squared plus 2y written in its factored form. That means when y is 0, the x value is 0. Also, when y is negative 2, the x value is 0. So we know this is a parabola. Um, we also know that it, it um, opens to the right, because as y gets bigger, the x values are going to have to get bigger means the vertex is going to have to be down here, and it's going to have to be on the line of symmetry between the two y-intercepts. So let's see, halfway between 0 and negative 2 is negative 1. If you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1 times 1, so you get this point at negative 1, 1. So the parabola itself looks like this, right? But we want to make sure that we only get the upper half. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, since it only has to be the upper half, let's let y equal t and x equal t squared plus 2t. And we'll just make sure that, um, that as we go on that the y values are increasing. So we'll start at a value of negative 1. So if y is negative 1, then t has to be negative 1. And then we'll just let t keep going out. That will ensure that we move this way along that curve. Now, if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to um, parameterize the lower half, so here's a here's a parameterization of the upper half. Now let, keep in mind that that parameterization is not unique because for any path there are multiple ways of walking that path. If you think about t as being the time that you're on the path. You might be on the top on the path early in the morning, late at night, or sometime in the afternoon. You might walk along a path. Uh, quickly, you might walk along it slowly, you might vary your speed as you walk along this path. So there are many, many parameterizations for the same path. For a minute, let's just think about what if it had said the lower half. So what if they'd asked us about the lower half? Well, you see, if we let t go backwards here, we're going to have um, y values and t values that are um, less than negative 1. So one uh, possibility for doing the lower half would be to do this x equals t squared plus 2t, and y equals t. And then we could let t start at negative infinity and go up until it reaches uh, negative 1. So that would be a parameterization where the y value is always increasing. And you just come in from, from, the, from the far distant past. You, you come in along this curve, and at time negative 1, then you reach this vertex of the curve. That would be one way to do it. If you wanted to go the other way, you'd need the, the y value to be become increasingly more negative. So you could set y to be negative t. And then since x has to be some function of y, then x we could get by substituting a negative t. So x would be negative t squared, which is the same as t squared. But then 2 times negative t would be minus 2t. This would ensure that we have the same curve. And then we just let t start at, let's see, we want the y value to start at negative 1 back here at the vertex. So we would let t, which is the opposite of y, start at 1 and go forward. Now we can see as time goes forward, y is going to be decreasing and the x value is going to be increasing. We'll, we'll start here at time 1 at the vertex. And then we'll move out that way. 
And you can see there's two ways of, multi of parameterizing this lower half, and many more ways as well. And the difference between these two is just the direction in which they do it, and that, that's, uh, that actually has something to do with the way these bounds work too. Another way of parameterizing is to use an identity. When we see this identity, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1, I've kind of learned to think of that in terms of that Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. By comparison, I, I kind of keyed into that because I had variable squared and variable squared, and that reminded me of cosine squared plus sine squared. In order to make that identity work, what has to play the role of cosine would have to be x over 2, right? That would have to be, could be either plus or minus cosine t. Either way, x over 2, when you squared it, would be x squared over 4, and x over 2 squared would also be cosine squared. By comparison, again, we would need y squared over 9 to be sine squared. That would mean y over 3 would have to be plus or minus sine t. Can you see that if we make either the plus or minus choice for x over 2 and we make the plus or minus sine as the choice for y over 3, that x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 is going to be a cosine squared plus sine squared that's going to satisfy the original equation. So I'm using this identity to come up with kind of a cool parameterization for this. This tells me that solving for x, x would have to be either plus or minus 2 cos and t. And the y would have to be either plus or minus 3 sine t. So I would have to make a specific choice for plus or minus. Um, I'd also need to come up with some bounds on t. Um, so it says the upper half of the ellipse. So if I want to do the upper half of the ellipse, probably the easiest way might be to set x to be 2 cos and t and y to be 3 sine t. And then I'll let t start at time 0. And to get halfway around a circle, t would have to go to pi, right? So we have something related to a circle. We have this ellipse. So let's let t go from 0 to pi. Now you can see this is going to be the right thing, because at time 0, the cosine is 1 and the sine is 0. So you're going to end here have an x value of 2. As time goes on, the sine will increase while the cosine decreases, so the y value will be increasing. By the time we hit pi halves, the cosine of pi halves is 0, and the sine of pi halves is 1, so x is 0 and y is 3, so we're up here at pi halves. So there's, there's t equals 0, t equals pi halves. And then by the time t gets to pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1, so x is going to be negative 2. The sine of pi is 0, so y will be 0, so we'll be over here. So that's going to be one possible parameterization of the curve. Now, there are lots of other choices that you could have made. You could have used negative 2 cos and t, but you'd have to be careful to adjust the bounds on t to make that work. There's no particular reason because of this identity. You could also think of this identity as sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So you could have also done this. You could have chosen x equals something like 2 sine t and y equals 3 cos t. So x squared over 4 will be sine squared. y squared over 9 will be cos squared. And so by this choice, we guarantee ourselves to be on the ellipse. Now we have to think about what, what values of, of t are we going to use. So, so we've got to come up with, well, what will our bounds on t be? Um, if we choose t starting at 0, then the x value is going to start at 0, and the y value is going to be 3. So we'll start here at t equals 0. And then as t increases, the x value will increase while the y value decreases. That means we're going to be moving this way, right? What we could do, we need, if we need to get the whole upper half of the ellipses back up a little bit and start at p, t equals negative pi halves, and then we'll just go forward um, until t equals pi halves. You can convince yourself that this is another parameterization. It goes along the ellipse because when t is um, negative pi halves, it goes along the upper half of the ellipse because when t is negative pi halves, then the sine negative pi halves is 0. So you start off with, a, with um, oh, sorry, at negative pi halves, the sine of negative pi halves is negative 1. So you start off with an x value of negative 2. The cosine of negative pi halves is 0, so the y value is 0. And then as time increases, the x value will increase. 
and um, while the y value, let's see, the cosine, the y value will um, also increase because it minus pi halves the the cosine is um, the cosine is zero. Ooh, uh oh. Let's see. In this range, yeah, we're good. In this range, the cosine is positive. Yeah. So from minus pi halves, the cosine starts at zero, moves forward to one, and goes back to zero. So this is going to be the first parameterization went along the upper half counterclockwise. The second parameterization went along the upper half clockwise.